Okay, now we're going to tie a, a fly called the SP Sink in the Sunray. Uh, whenever I'm tying flies, I'm naming them, I tend to, instead of writing golden pheasant or silver pheasant, write GP or SP. So in this fly, we're going to use a, a silver pheasant hackle as the throat. You can see a silver pheasant hackle has a nice, it's a white background with a, a black bar on it. I think it gives it a nice effect. So we're going to use a a metal tube because this is a sink and fly. So this is a, a stainless steel tube. What I'm going to do is line it with a, a plastic liner. So if I take the liner and flame the end up and pull that till it sets. Poke this up our tube. that off, leaving a couple of millimeters. And flame that end of it as well. Now if it's not level enough. Super glue to our uh, super glue well. I'm going to take black tan thread this time. And I'm just going to run my thread through it to get a bit of glue on a couple of inches of thread and then wrap that on. Now, there's no body to display because we have a silver tube already. But I am going to have a, a head with eyes on it, so if I wasn't using eyes, I'd have only half of this much on here. And just tie right, basically on a tie end point. So, we're going to put on an underwing here of a white bucktail. Just to support the wing and stop it falling into the hooks. So, take a bunch of that. Set it on so that it's coming back here where the hook you would expect it to be. And now we take a double needle, dip it into our super glue, and a little dab just into the cut ends there. Choose to put in a bit of flash if you want. Right, so here I'm going to put in crystal hair, pearl. I'll put a strand on slightly longer than my bucktail and fold it back and tie that in on top. Turn it off. So, next portion on this fly is a uh, fox. Red fox, which has a nice enough taper to it and a good length. I'm just going to strip out the underfur of that. And as with the other 
wing components, just a dab of glue. on top of the bucktail. So this fly's getting bigger as we go along. Uh, next if you want to put in a little bit more flesh I'd put in something like a Mirage crinkle. Just going to set that on top. as well. No. If we take our silver pheasant hackle, what I've done is nip the point of this out. And now I'm just going to trim back all the fluff. And I turn my fly upside down and tie across the stalk of this then pull the stalk forward that should create a bunch of feathers or feather fibers underneath like a beard and then tie that in and trim that off Alternatively what you can do is to actually wind a hackle of the silver pheasant uh, and if I was going to do that then I'd have probably done it either first up or just after the, the bucktail portion. Now, next thing I want is uh, some black goat. Now this fly is going to be about 100 millimeters long roughly. If I had been tying it longer, what I'd have probably done is put in another portion of Nayat or Icelandic sheep there, just uh, to give us that bit more support. So we cut our bunch out here and then we trim out a lot of the underfluff. Now I have a ruler attached to my desk and I'm just going to measure my wing for length on that to 100mm. said before, goat. It's very difficult to compress and therefore that makes it prone to slippage. Okay. So, now we've got our wing components on. They don't seem to be marrying, so you just take a mascara brush and brush the wing out, and that'll join the two portions together and should give us a nice taper to the fly. thing then I want to do is put on a bit of uh, peacock. So that one here and I've actually dyed this green because I like the effect it gives. I'm going to take a few strands of that. And roughly match up the tips of them and then just roll all over the place so you just run your nail along the underside of it and we're going to put this on but not right out to the very tips of the of the wing because we want the hair portions of the wing to protect and support our, uh, our peacock hair which tends to be more brittle So now I'm 
just going to even up the head a bit and finish that off. There's a few spare fibers there, so I'm just going to flame that. And then I'm going to take my dubbing needle and my super glue. And just varnish the head with super glue to make it bulletproof. So right. Now I want to put eyes on it. Now you could use uh, a UV gel, I suppose. But in this case, I'm going to use uh, Evo Stick Serious Glue because I find it a lot easier to deal with. But it doesn't mix with super glue, so what you need to do is take that away and let that dry. And then come back to it several hours later. So, what you'd probably do is tie a batch of these clays. So, I have one tied from earlier. Set that on. Now I take my Evo Stick Serious Glue and I just do a run around my head. And I'm going to take uh, these, which are about a three millimeter silver epoxy. Eye. These are quite awkward to put on, so what I do is I put on my finger and I take a set of tweezers. I place the eye up onto the head. And then do the same on the other side. I'm pushing it backwards into the head just so that it catches a lip. Now if I wet my finger with spit I can shape this without it sticking to my hand. And there you have an SP sink and sunray and this air glue will dry in about five minutes or so that I can work with it. Uh, there you go. SP. Sinking summary.